joy of the Lord really and truly is our strength. Yeah. You know, there's times and there's situations and there's difficulties that we face, but He truly is our strength. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. That tells me there's joy. If you look at verse 16, I love this verse. Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's the joy of the Lord. How many of you still have your joy? Amen. Let me hear you say it. I still have joy. Have say it again. I still have joy. You know, the devil don't like it when God's people are joyful. That's his job is to try to be a discouragement, to attack. And he may not be a pitchfork and horns and, and red suit and flames. There's all kinds of ways that the enemy attacks. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy is a small word, but it's mighty in meaning. This is the definition of joy. The emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. Joy is a strong basis for the Christian and in our Christian journey. And joy is actually the opposite of happiness. Because of happiness, or because happiness is a reaction to an action. Think about that. If it's your birthday and somebody gives you a gift, it makes you what? Happy. That was an action that they did that made you react into that happiness. Whereas joy is an action that comes from God. Now, I believe God can give you joy through your children. I have two of them. We're wonderfully blessed. He can give you joy through your grandchildren, if you're a grandparent or through a spouse. But think about the happiness and, and where the joy actually comes from. It's the action from God. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. I hope you asked because I'm going to tell you. How many of you have ever found money that you didn't remember that you had? You may be cleaning out. Did it make you happy? Amen, it does. Makes me happy. How about getting a new home or a new car? Finding a new love. Most of the time it makes you happy. And our son's 16 and he's got a little girlfriend back home and, and he's happy right now. You get out of a bad situation or relief from a bad situation and you're happy. But when something transpires and causes the very thing that brought you the happiness to go away or dissolve or disappear, that could devastate you. Your happiness is gone. A new job. You get called in and, and you get a new job or you leave a job you've had for years to take a better job and, and you get there and before you know it, just a few weeks, they say, we've got a downsize. Has anybody out here been through that? They called you in and say, hey, you know, work's ending. We're going to have to lay you off for a little while, those kind of things. The happiness can leave. The happiness is gone. Cars break down. Amen. Ain't nothing happy about that. But joy, the strength provided to the believers, enables us and helps us in the times of adversity and in trials. Joy allows us to say in the middle of the toughest times, I still have joy. After everything I've been through, bless God, I still have joy. Joy is the result of being able to see why, uh, that God is a good God, even in the midst of everything that's tore up in your life. Joy is what sustains during the difficulties, even when we see that those things that were making us happy, is the joy of the Lord that gives us the strength. And since He is the giver of the joy, there is nothing that the devil can do to take it away. Joy is not the response to anything. It's us knowing as children of God that our Heavenly Father has the ability to bring the joy. Let me remind you that when the winds blow and the sea billows begin to hit up against your life's boat, you can rest assured that your soul is anchored in Jesus Christ. And you can shout, oh, I still have the joy. No matter what you're facing. We've been redeemed. We can enjoy the fullness of God. And this is the action of joy. Not the reaction to an exterior, but the action of an interior movement of the Holy Spirit. You can't help but have joy when the Holy Spirit shows up. 
It's the joy that allows us to say when we've lost a loved one or we experienced a heartache or pain or sorrow that it's going to only last for a night because joy is coming in the morning. It says it in His Word. Paul told the church of Corinth, uh, Corinth that in, in second chapter, verse 4, and it speaks to us still today. I read the Scripture. You're going to have trouble. You're going to be hard-pressed. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be run through the ringer of life. But because of the one who went to Calvary, who went to an old rugged cross for each and every one of us, why would you expect to have to endure any less? You know what the price of the crucifixion was? I heard he preach one time. Was it the nails? Was it the cross? Was it the crown of thorns? Was it the spear? Do you know what the price of the crucifixion was? It's you. That's what it cost. You're the reason. You're the cost. I'm the cost. Let those storms rage. Let the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me. When the trials have you bound, you can shout, I still have the joy. In Psalms 89, 16, it says, In your name they rejoice all day long. Not just Sunday mornings at 11. In your name they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness they are exalted. We need to be joyous or joyful because we're going to be victorious. As a child of God, you are and will be the victor and not the victim of your circumstance. Isaiah 60, 15 says, Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy for many generations. What that's saying is, is a promise from God that after it's all said and done, that God gives us and our children and our children's children joy. Forever and ever and ever. It's an eternal excellence. You're going to have troubles. You're going to have heartaches, death, and all those things that go along with life. But the joy that God has given will keep us from being crushed and beaten down. Do you still have the joy today? It's normal to ask questions or wonder what in the world is going on. It's the joy that gives us the strength, church. It will not allow us to be controlled by the circumstances. It's the joy of the Lord, the persecuted, the misused, the abused, the lied on, the cheated on. It's because of joy that He freely gave that each and every one of us can rest on that knowledge that everything's going to be just fine. Let me remind you of a few things about joy. Joy sustains. Joy will retain. Joy maintains. And joy contains. The story of Job, all of you are familiar with it. He lost everything he had. All his material wealth, his family, all of those things. His wife told him to curse God and die. His friends told him, said, there's something that you've done somewhere, brother, <laughs> that's bringing all this on you. Job knew. He knew. He went to chapter 13 and verse 15, and when he said, though he slays me, yet I'm going to trust him. Joy changes that hopelessness into a hope fulfilled. It takes a perplexed situation and turns it into a praise. It turns your questions into petitions. It takes those depressed and changes it into delivered. It turns a giving up attitude into a looking up attitude and changes that sorrow into jubilance. When I was talking with, with Brother Jim about this morning and and the service, I ran across a story about an elderly gentleman who lived in a huge house in this town and, uh, with big fancy staircases and chandeliers and the nicest clothes. And he took care of some things at home and then went into town one day to take care of some things. And all the, the fire engines and the people started running back across town towards the area where he lived. And he got there and all he found was his house in rubble. Smoking timbers. And as he stood there and looked, he began to sing. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I trust him, the more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows. 
only the joy of the Lord. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The town busybody showed up where that man I can't was. believe he's singing. I can't believe that he's rejoicing in such a tough time. She said, listen, your wife's dead, your clothes are gone, and all you have left is a home and a pile of ashes. And you're standing here singing. His response was, my clothing was simply my covering. My spouse, my belongings, and this old house, they want my home. It's just a place I'm residing in until I get to the other side. I still have joy. Think about it. That upset that busybody and went on about their way. And then the local pastor came to check on the old man and to offer words of encouragement and walked up to him. And the old man was singing. The pastor tapped the old man on the shoulder and said, Brother, are you all right? He said, Yes, sir, pastor. He said, I sure am. You have to understand I'm not alone. Jesus said He wouldn't leave me as an orphan. And better yet, I'm not homeless because He said He had left to go get my house ready. So these things here may seem to be all gone, but since I serve a God who has never failed me, deceived me, or disappointed me, I can still say today that I have the joy. I venture to say that some of you today probably have been or you are at a place just like this old man. You may have lost the things that you have brought or that have brought you happiness, and now they're gone. Don't look at what you're going through, but instead celebrate and look to the one who is taking you through. 